In a classroom, 12 of the 21 students are female. 14 students wear jeans. 8 girls wear jeans. In this classroom, are girls more or less likely to wear jeans than boys are? In this lesson, you will learn a formula for ascertaining the independence of events by examining some particular situations. Let's review. Two events are independent if the occurrence of one does not affect the occurrence of the other. Event A, a red ball is randomly picked from the left box. In event B, a red ball is randomly picked from the right box. If a red ball is picked from the left box, does that affect the likelihood of a red ball being picked from the right box? That's the idea of independence. Are event A and event B independent? Well, right now the probability of a red from the red right box is one-third. And if a red ball is picked from the left box, the probability of a red from the right box is still one-third. These events are independent. Ashley counted the number of students in her class who were wearing jeans. That's represented by the table here. You can see that twice as many girls wear jeans as not, and twice as many boys wear jeans as not. We can represent this in a Venn diagram. So we have females on the left, jean wearing people on the right. There are four girls who don't wear jeans, eight girls who do wear jeans. There are six boys who wear jeans. And in the blue, there are three boys who do not wear jeans. So the 21 students are represented in both diagrams. Is being female independent of wearing jeans? Sure, because the same ratio of girls wear jeans as boys wear jeans. So let's look at some individual probabilities. The probability of being female in this class is 12 over 21. The probability of wearing jeans, where there are 14 students who wear jeans of the 21, that's 2 over 3. And the probability of wearing jeans if you're a woman is 8 over 21. That's 8 in the intersection over 21. So notice the relationship between these fractions. 4 over 7 multiplied by 2 over 3 is 8 over 21. That's not a coincidence. That is a property of being independent. And we can formalize this with this rule. Events A and B are independent if and only if the probability of A multiplied by the probability of B is equal to the probability of A and B. Here's another example with the same class. The probability of being male is 9 over 21 because there are 9 boys of the 21 students. That's 3 over 7. The probability of not wearing jeans, well there are 7 students who do not wear jeans, that's equal to the probability is 7 over 21 or one-third. Well, we know that these events are independent. So let's see whether we can use the formula to find the probability of being male and not wearing jeans. Well, that would be 3 over 7 times 1 over 3, and that would be 1 over 7. And this represents a confirmation of the use of this particular formula. A common understanding is to think that the probability of A and B means the probability of A plus the probability of B. But what probability of A and B really means is that's the probability of both events A and B occurring. Another common misunderstanding is to use this rule when the events are not independent. When the events are not independent, one needs to use the rule for conditional probability. In this lesson, you have learned a formula for ascertaining the independence of events by examining some particular situations.